Hi, in this video, we're going, I'm going to have a look at checking calculations. This comes up quite a lot in functional skills exams, and it's a useful skill to have. So there are a couple of methods that they approve of in the exam, but it, both are useful, so I'll show you them both. Um, the first one is an inverse operation, and the second one is by rounding and estimating. So we'll go through them one at a time. So first of all, the inverse operation, you need to know what that means. So we've got four operations, add, subtract, multiply and divide. And as you can see here, add and subtract are opposites, inverse operations, and multiply and divide are also opposites or inverse operations. So if we have an addition sum, we can check it by using a subtraction sum. And if we have a multiplication sum, we can check that using a division sum and vice versa. Let's look at some examples. So, we all know that 2 plus 3 equals 5. We don't really need to check it, but I'm going to use it for an example. So, the opposite of add is subtract. So, to check this sum, we could do 5 take away 3 equals 2, or we could do 5 take away 2 equals three. Always start with the answer and work back. So we've started with five because that's the answer. Next one, if we have 99 take away 21, and if we've worked it out to be 78, because we've done a subtraction here, the inverse is addition. So again, we're going to start with the answer and do an addition and hope we get back to the original number, which we do. Now, multiplication, we know that the inverse is division. So again, we'll start with the answer, 132. And here there's two options. We can either divide it by 11 and check that we get 12, or we could divide it by 12 and check that we get 11. Either is fine. And finally, division sum, we are going to check with a multiplication. So we will do 24 multiplied by 10 which takes us back to 240. So they are some examples of inverse checks. So if you're asked to check your answer, they'll probably be looking for one of these or the following method. So sometimes you are asked to round a number and then use that rounded number to check your answer. Or sometimes they might not ask you that and you could just use it to check anyway. But let's have a look. So Hopefully you are familiar with rounding to the nearest 100 or the nearest 10. If not, go and have a look at the videos on that. But this sum here, 215 plus 389 is 604. So to estimate that, so we can use this either as a prediction beforehand or as a check afterwards, uh, I'm going to round to the nearest 100. And actually, that's pretty close. So... If we, were, if we were using it as a check, do we just need to check we're sort of in the right ballpark? And here we are. Next one, this is the kind of thing you might do in the supermarket if you want to buy nine somethings for three ninety nine, and you can't be bothered to get your phone or your calculator out. So three ninety nine, I would round to four pounds. It's very close. And then you can even round the nine, nine to a ten which gives you four times 10, which is 40 pounds. You could actually do four times nine if you are good with your times tables and you could have gotten 36, which actually is even closer. With rounding and estimating, there isn't always a right and a wrong way to round. It's just easiest way to get you a rough answer. 